and uh, got in trouble for that. But I had, I had a, a cigar box. My father smoked cigars and had a cigar box that I kept under my radiator full of my crude proto nudie art that I did start doing from about the age of six or seven. And once I saw a Playboy, I said, yeah, that works. <laughs> so uh, that's why I say as much as I try to get away from this, I don't think I really can. I think it's just in the blood. I, uh, the first illustration job I ever had was a cover for Screw Magazine. I started doing art and sex in it because, in general, if a place is allowing you to draw porn, they'll also allow you to draw every other weird thing that you ever wanted to do. Every creepy, bizarre, surrealist thing you can put there because once they've gotten over the hurdle of drawing a cock, they are artistically open to everything else as well. Almost every cool underground artist I, I know has done covers for Screw Magazine, and I think that this is part of the reason. Um, when I was a kid, uh, my brother Marty and I, Marty's older than I, we were introduced for the older cousin to Playboy Magazine. And, and uh, I was so fascinated uh, with how pretty the girls were in, in, in the magazine that uh, we went home and we started drawing naked ladies, you know, very crudely for an eight year old. Um, but uh, I, I just got obsessed with it. But more about like getting it right. It wasn't like, who is naughty? It was more, after a while, the naughtiness goes away, and you just want to get it right. You just want to draw it right, the, the legs, the way of the legs. I mean, it was very crude art. I got in trouble for those, and so I, I, uh, I just stopped doing it. I just I, I sort of like, you know what, it's too much. I got in trouble for it, so I'm not going to pursue it. So when we started doing uh, Heaven Rockets, and we were getting relatively serious response to it. Um, I just, well, the first issue has you know, naked breasts, in it, so it wasn't that big a leap to do sex. You know? But there was just a point where I just, you know, I'll just take off this much more clothes, and this much more clothes, and, and then this much more clothes. And then I started having the, the simulated, which would seem like simulated sex in an R-rated film in the comic, because you know, there's only so much you could show with a hard on and that kind of stuff, like genitalia. And, you know, you wanted to get your comics around the world because you know, England and Balkan, so we want that. But uh, and then so Birdland was just a, a, a release and to just do it all the way, and I had to just um, count on that a lot of places would not accept it. I didn't care about them because I was doing so many comics at the time. I was, uh, at the same time, I was I was doing two long stories in Northern Rockets that were eventually going to be uh, collected as Poison River and Northern Rockets X. So I was already doing that. So doing a bird at the same time is just sort of a, you know, just, just, just cause, you know, rebelling against the concerns. You know. Well, I mean, do you, does anyone have any you know, thoughts about, I mean, go what you said with Birdland, you know, it, it, you wanted it just to be a sex comic, but it ended up having, you know, these other aspects to it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was that a failure as a sex comic? Or? Uh, in a way, yeah. Because you know, that was something that was really good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just supposed to be a fun sex film, but I guess at the time, I could probably do it more now, but at the time it was like, no matter what I did, it had to carry some weight. It had to be worth getting up in the morning drawing that. Because after, you know, 75 hard-ons, you just don't want to draw me. <laughs> <laughs> 75 breasts is another story. But, um, no, no, seriously, it just, it just after the, the sex, all, you know, how many positions can I come up with, you know? Yeah. Because I didn't really do any research on it, I really. I just waited on it. Because I don't know what I look like having sex. It's probably horrible, but I don't know what it looks like. And I didn't, I didn't want to look at porn because that you know, creeped me out to research porn and that stuff. So, I, at least at the time, I, I do it now. But no, seriously, I just, I really didn't want to mess with it. I, I hate doing research. I hate seeing how it's supposed to be done. Uh, and so I just used my uh, you know, artistic background from high school. You know. Drawing <laughs> uh, stuff I remember, and just winged it. Uh, and after a while, you know, by the third issue, and then we published the fourth, I had no more interest in drawing hardcore sex only because I'd done it so I mean, on paper so much. Well, never mind. Uh, <laughs> I had drawn so much of it and, and all the different angles, different sizes, that it, it, you know, it got out of my system. I mean, if I had an idea to do another part of it, I would, but it's not something I'm. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, I was just, I think it was interesting something that Molly said though about like you found working for like the adult publications kind of liberating because anything went. And it's funny because I worked for a lot of, again, I say this with no pride, but I worked for a lot of men's magazines and the one thing I found was how unimaginative 
It was. I mean, it really, you know. It probably gave me a biased view on it. Oh yeah. Still good money though. It was it was it was pretty cool. God, remember the days when print publications paid good money? Does anyone else? I mean, do, do you ever you know have a question about whether there it's, it's pornography or the erotic or you know just a realistic part of your story? I mean, I think all of you really do do art, you know, sex just because it's a part of life. It's part of what happens in your stories. But I mean, do you do you question whether this is erotic or or is it is it realism or I, I don't know if I'm the best person to answer you first, but because my book is full of people being raped and chased out of their homes and having miscarriages and abortions. And so erotic. Yeah, right. <laughs> Very cheerful. Um, you know, that stuff all happened by accident. I was sort of an innocent bystander while the story happened. Um, if you're not doing children's books, if you're doing stories by and for grown-ups, and sex is not coming into it, I don't know if you're telling a human story. And I don't mean that in a judgmental way, I just mean that it, it's so interwoven with all of our lives that how could it not come into a story that you're working on? In, in whatever way you're, you're doing it, you know? Um, well, uh, I'll just also throw this up. When do you go too far? Have you ever considered, you know, I, this Bob, I mean, your stuff definitely breaks a lot of taboos. I was told, I'm sorry. I, I was told um, no penises because our printer in Hong Kong will refuse to print the book. Yep. So it's, it, you go too far when some person on the other side of the planet and you don't give a crap about somehow gets in the way of what you're doing. So male penis, that's really the deal. <laughs> that, that's your <laughs> <laughs> or, or else when some like imaginary person is... Um, it's always like, oh, I'm totally fine with this, but this other person is offended by it. No, I won't tell you their name, but they totally exist, so you can't do it anymore. You should be careful because some people are uncomfortable. Some people. I recently hosted a documentary on erotic comics for French TV, and the uh, different, and it was for um, Arte, which is like the French PBS. The difference between what's acceptable there and what's acceptable here, they had this shot of like, it was Tom Finland drawing of three guys on top of each other, and they're like, Oh, it is very tasteful. It is a side view. <laughs> Bob, what you have had? You had problems with the sensors or taboos? Or? Um, I was just, just in my head because it feels good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, not really, not really sensors. Uh, I mean, I censor myself, which. You, maybe you wouldn't know it to look at a lot of what I've done, and I have certainly regrets for some of the things I've let out there. But uh, yeah, occasionally you go too far. I mean, one of the, the one comic of mine that actually was a filthy pornographic mess was a thing called Shugga, uh, which was just this barbarian strip, and basically it sprang from the days when I was working for Cracked Magazine, Mads extremely inferior uh, cousin, <laughs> and uh, there were so many things of what you can and cannot do when you're working for a kid's publication that just all this, it was the, the pornographic equivalent of, of bile just began spilling out on paper. I mean, it was, I guess, in a way, kind of like, not that I'm comparing myself qualitatively to Crumb, but, you know, Crumb's work in American <coughs> Greetings Certainly, he built up a wellspring of, like, must-purge ugliness. <laughs> I had a lot of that stuff kind of festering me from working for, you know, this kitty mag for people I didn't like. Uh, so this very vile humor, you know, most, I, I've, I've done a lot of sex. I, I don't think I've ever done anything erotic. It's always been kind of just this thing, you know, where stuff's happening. So... But, but I went too far. Like when, you know, I was doing that just for fun, but when I actually found a publisher for it, there were a couple of panels where I said, yeah, no, <laughs> it's too much, it's too much. But you mentioned that you were toning down minimum wage? Yeah. What's, what's that about? Uh, that's an attempt to, well, again, because I think some people, for anyone who's familiar with minimum wage, it, it, it actually is, I think, a nice, grounded, realistic, uh, slice of life kind of comic. But because it portrayed a young couple, there was a lot of sex. It's one of the, you know, bit of glue that holds a couple that shouldn't be together, uh, together in this comic. And 
a lot of people told me over the years that they had this perception that it was just sex, 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 because there is nudity in it. You know, it's a long book, but when you're flipping through and you're just a casual browser, yeah. and all you see is tits, tits, tits. People will stop and go. They say, oh, it's a dirty book. Yeah. So I thought, I want people to realize it's actually got a good story to it, so I kind of notched it back. So there would be, a, is this a new edition that's coming out? That's yeah, like the, in March. The, the, a big deluxe the, edition. The minimum tits. It's a <laughs> maximum minimum wage. Yeah. <laughs> it's big. Yeah. Now, with, yeah, now with less naughty bits. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, Molly, because uh, uh, you have worked with a lot of, you know, real life, I mean, you know, erotic performers, I guess, you know, I mean, do you find that, that uh, your work, you know, you go, can go too far with that? I mean, is there anything you need to hold back with when you're dealing with real people like that? Or, you know, is it a sensitive line? I mean, I, I, I debate uh, the, the term too far. Um, I mean, I'm friends with, with a lot of people who work in the sex industry or who are burlesque performers or who are underground performers. But honestly, they're just more interesting than civilians. They're just, they're just tough and smart and hustling and performative and awesome. And I don't know, maybe it's just a cooler world to hang out in. <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> I mean one, one, one thing, though, is... I know that what I have drawn has negatively affected my career in some ways. Uh, one time, I did a series for a major, a major comics publisher, and when it came out, the series, which where every single person who was in it was either in a monk's robe or a giant robot suit that was eight feet tall, um, when the thing came out, it was um, rated 18 plus. And when I, I tried to find out why it was rated 18 plus, and they were like, "Well, you drew it." <laughs> so you've been branded. Yeah, I've been branded. Um, Gilbert, I mean, do you find, like, uh, you know, there's been things that, that were taboo that you felt uncomfortable drawing, you know? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, brutality, I guess, in some of the, or emotional brutality in a lot of your stories also, mm -hmm. where uh, sex is concerned, but, you know, uh, are there any taboos? I always thought it was happiness at light. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I, you're talking about, like, my serious stories with yeah. sex, not yeah. really, because for a night, yeah. it's happiness and silliness, but, uh, I don't know. I, I never thought about it that way. Um, I don't think uh, I don't have any interest in violence per se against people's bodies. I, I just don't like it. It creeps me out. I mean, people are into that. Just keep it to pictures and don't look for real, you know. But I don't. Um, it just, it just violence and sex, you know, just creeps me out. I, I don't like it. I never did. I like. I always thought since I was a kid that you know, sex was a happy, warm, it's a nice com thing. comfortable place. I just like it, you know. You know. Um, that's, that's how I was thought. That's why there's so many huge tits in my comics. Big butts and big, you know, everything, you know. That, you know just, so, um, but yeah, but I will work in, uh, work in, you know, screwed up psychology, you know, with that. And sometimes a lot of sex c comes into play with that. But it's never really any, com I'm not commenting on sex, doing that to people. No, it's people do that to people. Sex is actually a nice place to be. and. Uh, and we just screwed up, basically. Well, we do want to open it up to questions out there. Does anybody have any questions for our panel? Hold on.